some movie news. Before, thankfully, Marvel Studios slash Disney came to the agreement with Sony Pictures to have Spider-Man cross over and be in Captain America Civil War. And now have Spider-Man Homecoming on the horizon coming out in 2017 with Michael Keaton as the villain. Thank you. Before that happened, The Amazing Spider-Man 2 came out to less than... It was mediocre. I mean, I saw it. It was mediocre. It had mediocre reviews, but it underperformed. Mm -hmm. But along the way, Sony wanted to create a Spider-Man cinematic universe. They were going to go off the fucking rails and do a... At the same time, developing a Venom movie, uh, some Spider-Girl movie, an Ant fucking May movie somehow... A Sinister Six movie. <laughs> Not Spider-Man 3. A Sinister <laughs> Six movie. Yep. And might have been one other one. Where, after Amazing Spider-Man 2, no one wanted to see any more Spider-Man movies from Sony at all. Right. Which is why when, when Marvel came in, like, come on, let's, come on. Let's, let's just do this. Come on. And they, and they figured it out. So I think how the way it works now is that Sony can greenlight any Spider-Man movie but Marvel has creative control over it. It's exactly what it says in the article. Exactly. Sony Sony greenlights the movies. Marvel is Marvel creates them. Basically. So it basically means and Marvel has control. Yeah. Because if Sony comes out and says we want to do this movie, Marvel can say, "All right, we have creative control. We're going to do whatever the fuck we want. Maybe we'll do an entirely different movie then." Right. So this this is why it's still a weird relationship. But it still makes sense to have Spider-Man be in the cinematic universe because as he he showed up, talked to fucking Iron Man fought with Captain America, had the, hey, kid, where are you from? Queens, Brooklyn, and the whole fucking crowd cheers, and it's a feel-good moment. It makes sense to have Spider-Man interact. He's a flagship character, interact with the rest of the universe. He would have been, it'd be, it was weird up to this point without it. Yeah. Yet, somehow, Sony still wants, under Marvel's tutelage, to create their own... They still want uh, Spider-Man to have its own cinematic universe. I, a cinematic universe within a cinematic universe. Yeah. It doesn't make any goddamn sense to me. And what one of the things that they're talking about doing is creating a Silver Sable movie. Silver Sable! Which, I'm not sure how that falls under <laughs> Spider-Man. I know she appears in, in well, Spider-Man. She's like the first... Her first appearance, I believe, was Spider-Man. She's generally considered a Spider-Man spin-off Well, so character. was Punisher. Pu pu yeah. Punisher be, shouldn't be considered a Spider-Man character. No. Or Kingpin shouldn't be considered. But that, but that's why they, that's why it's under Sony's... It's under really Sony's weird. Way. I mean, I, I associate Silver Sable just with many different comics. Captain America comics, shows it up Daredevil. With Spider Man, that's so weird. It's like, why? I guess when they say, oh, they see Black Widow in the Marvel movies. Silver Sable's kind of. It's in the ballpark. It's, it's, it's a mercenary character. She's, she's does, a mercenary who takes out war criminals. Uh, yeah, so it's like, but I just don't. I don't see, I don't see a reason to do a Silver Sable movie. No. I just don't. I'm not saying you can't do one, but it's like. It's not like she's appeared in other movies where you can say, oh, I mean, if, if Marvel's a little unwilling to do a Black Widow movie, you can't do a Silver Sable movie. <laughs> and it, it, yeah, it, um, I, I mean, it's implied that, you know, this would still have to go through Marvel, but I just think Sony needs to stop talking when it comes to Spider-Man. Yes. I think they just need to press the green button that says, yes, please, Marvel, make us money. And then Marvel will go, okay, we're going to go make you your Spider-Man movie now, Sony. Like, that's, I think, what they yeah. need to do. Um, they, they need to stop with these fucking ideas. Just because they have these characters under their umbrella that they can use does not mean that they should use them. And I'm not saying Silver Sable can't be an interesting character, but you're not coming out the fucking gates of your cinematic universe with a Silver Sable movie to knock people's socks off. Yeah, so Studio Chief Tom Rothman said, yeah, we're still working on that uh, animated Spider movie coming out in 2018. Fine. I'm, but even, I'm sure Marvel's not happy with that. No. Even though they're going to have creative control, it's like, whoa, we're trying to do our own thing. You're going to do an Inspire movie in a separate universe that's animated. I'm like, uh, we're, what's like, yeah. You know, we just had a movie come out the year before Spider-Man. We're probably going to have a sequel come out in the next year. It's like, yeah, let's, you're, you're, you're kind of playing with fire here now, Sony. The reason why the Marvel Cinematic Universe works is something called cohesion. Yes. That's, that's why even small Marvel Cinematic Universe movies like Ant-Man can do well and get get good ratings and reviews is because they all tie together. As soon as you start fracturing out these movies, well, this Spider-Man movie pertains to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but this one's just kind of its own animated thing, because yeah. animation! It's like, no, guys, you're just, 
you're going to repeat the same mistakes yes. over and over again. That's why I'm even leery on, well, it's slightly different with the DC having two different flashes. In the movie and TV, that, that, that just tears my insides up, and it shouldn't. Right. You know, but then they even said a few months ago that they still want to do a live-action Venom movie. This is before yes. Civil War uh, came out. Yeah. Now, I'm sure Marvel's was like, oh, <laughs> Calm down, Sony. Calm down. Let the adults we ha- talk. We have. Please. To, you're going to make a ton of money still with Homecoming and probably three or four Spider-Man movies in the future. We can have Venom in a future movie. But, <laughs> all right, buddy. All right, buddy. I know you're anxious, buddy. It's, 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 sit it down. It, Calm it down. It, it's like oh, I'm trying. I'm thinking of a really coarse metaphor for how Sony's acting right now, but it, jo- it involves like uh, getting a hand job in, in the back of a bleacher or something. Uh, but anyway. <laughs> So, I mean, is there any property that you'd want to see from Sony involving the Spider-Man universe that oh. isn't Spider-Man at this point? No, at this point, I just want Marvel to have all of their heroes back. I don't <laughs> want anyone else having any... You want... I didn't even go see Apocalypse. I just I didn't either! I just couldn't bring myself... And that's Fox, I know, but I just couldn't bring my... I... And I like Days of Future Past. I didn't see it. I like Days of Future Past, and I'm a massive, massive fucking <laughs> X-Men fan, and I just couldn't it's, give a it's shit. It's already out of theater. It's only been like five weeks. I went to check last week, and I'm like, whoa, it's playing in one movie theater in La Jolla? I, I was like, really? The quality of the Marvel Cinematic Universe movies has, is such that I'm more than willing to look at what they shake up with DC because it's a different it's it's a different ball of wax. But when it comes to Marvel movies, you're spoiled. We're spoiled. I'm spoiled. I can only look at the Marvel Cinematic Universe one. We're absolutely absolutely spoiled. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's I can't. Sad. And it kills me because I mean I know Spider Man's your favorite and you're getting on track with him. But the X Men. After 15 years, I'm getting on track, buddy. The X Men have always been my favorite, and I just <laughs> please bring them back. Oh, they're the doing fold. that. They're doing that TV show. Oh. <sighs> That's going to come out, which might be associated. I think eventually it's all going to come back in like 10 years. It's all going to be back. We're going to be 70 years old, but you're going to finally, before Frank dies, he just wants to see a Fantastic Four movie done right. Just give him one. I would have loved to have seen Chris Evans and Hugh Jackman just once on the same screen. Just once on the same screen as Cap and you'll see a, Wolvie. You'll see a new Wolverine. He'll be five foot five. He'll be a small one like the comics. And right. He'll be like, oh, it's not Hugh Jackman, but... I think we'll they'll have to recast everyone at some point. I mean, it's, it's, no one's looking forward to Chris Evans being recast. Or no Robert Downey Jr. will be the first one because yeah. he's already fifty. And can you be a seventy-year-old Iron Man? Uh, Iron Man, technically you can. In the, in the, but <laughs> they'll just de-age him like he's a uh, teenager, like in the beginning of Civil War, which is yeah. excellent, by the way. All right, so okay, Sony, just don't. You, you got a hand job. Don't go out buying hookers. Is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> 